Welcome along to video number 68. If this file looks familiar, that is because it is the same one as I used for number 67, where we created a little report using drop down boxes and connections between different lists. Anyway, what I want to focus on in this video is the concept of smallest worthwhile change and I deleted a couple of columns just to make this example as clean as possible. And so we still have the layout that we developed in video 67. And that is something that allows me to, to pick my two test sets of data. At the moment I've got pre-season 1 and pre-season 2 selected. So the starting point is really to be able to identify how much change there has been since the last test period. And to do so a relatively simple mathematics equation can be performed. Current test minus our reference test divided by the reference test gives us a number of 7% and in this case it's negative. There's been a decrease of 7% since last time. I'm going to copy this all the way down. There'll be a few errors at the bottom but let's not worry about that for now. So we can look at those numbers and we can see that we've done our calculations relatively correct. Whenever there's a decrement it shows up as a negative. So we've got that percent change column now to reference against. Let's say that we know that test 1 has a smallest worthwhile change of 5.3%. So what I should be able to do now is go through each row and identify whether or not the percent change that the athlete achieved was greater or less than the meaningful change as identified in cell M2 up here. And so to make this process a little bit easier, I'm going to use the name box to call this SWC Test 1. Now we've got three tests in this overall data set. I'm only going to use this one for this video, but you can understand that if you've got a full testing battery to look at, you're going to need to have a reference table that includes the smallest worthwhile change for each of your tests. And I've taken a bit of liberty here in that I've identified that there are five possible scenarios. The change that the athlete had is greater than the smallest worthwhile change threshold in a positive direction and therefore there's a real improvement. In contrast the change is greater than but on the negative side so therefore there's a real decrement. If it's an identical score there's no change and if it's within the smallest worthwhile change margin, then there may be either a possible improvement or a possible decrease. That's just the way I've defined it. It really doesn't matter however you want to do that. Um, this isn't a statistical lesson. This is about creating a function inside your spreadsheet to allow for this type of analysis. So you can go off and, and get all this stuff correct once you've followed this particular method of, of technically connecting it together. So if we're looking at a if formula to identify whether or not a particular score, in this case Lizzie Lopez, has a negative 7% change. What I want to do before I go into putting it all together into one formula is demonstrate what parts the if equation has. And because we have five possible outcomes, we want to be able to understand that our equation needs to have five options. So I'm going to write the first one here. If the score is greater than that, then put real improvement as our answer, otherwise leave it blank. And so that's blank. Let's look at the second situation. If our score is both greater than zero, and less than our threshold, then that's a possible improvement, otherwise it's a blank. If it's zero, there's no change.
that's a possible decrease. And our last one, and it's a real decrement, otherwise it's blank. And so we can see that for negative 7, it shows up as a real decrement. And if I just quickly overwrite this with a different score, let's see what happens. So I can start from a high number, I get an improvement. As soon as I get below that 5.3, it becomes possible. If it's 0, there's no change. If it's between 0 and negative 5.3, it's a possible decrease. And if it's below that, it's a real decrement. So I need to put all of those five options into one formula. When you do that, it's called nesting if equations, where you have if, 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 and all sorts of options in between those brackets. So there's that equation here now for you. Not only have I put those five ifs in there, but I've also put a little error protection at the beginning. And basically what that's saying is this bit at the start here that says if count j9 to k9 does not equal 2. That basically says that there needs to be two numbers for this formula to go ahead. If not, just stop right now and put a blank and don't waste any time going through all of these five different if functions to see whether or not it meets any criteria because it's blank and there's going to be nothing anyway. So real decrement, I'll center that first and then I'll drag it down and we'll see and be able to do a little audit to see if we've got it right. So we've got a mixture of outcomes there. Let's see what happens if we change the different tests, and that's adjusting. Let's also see what happens if we change it to rugby and choose pre-season three. So it's working correctly regardless of the option. And so that is an option, and in a funny way, I believe that that is slightly easier to understand than our next method, method two. And the reason that I say that, because this formula is a mammoth, is that you can go through each part of it and do a little evaluation. For example, I can go up the top here. I can select a little part. I can hit F9, and it's going to say true or false. And so I can look at my spreadsheet and identify whether that should be happening or not. For our second method, we need to use a lookup table option. And as a consequence, our lookup table takes on relatively high significance. I've put in brackets here that the order is critical. It needs to be organized in a way where the lowest number is at the top and the highest number is at the bottom simply because the way the match function works, which we'll need to make this method work. So I've got real decrement at the top of this table and real improvement at the bottom, which is the opposite of the, of the table I use for the nested if. So just worthy of, of taking a note of that. And in particular, um, I've mentioned it in previous videos too, this is a particular test where the higher the score, the better. And so you may have to reconsider this layout if you're doing a test such as speed where the lower the score is better. Anyway, let's crack on. So we've got our lookup table. If I want to extract something from this table, then a index function is always my go-to option. And my answer is going to be one of these five options. I'm going to lock that because I want to drag this formula down. So on a PC I can hit F4 and everything locks. How am I going to find out which option that I want? The match function will tell me that. I want to match whatever is in this cell here. I'm not going to lock that because I want to drag it down. Matching it in this column. Instead of an exact match, which is what I use when I'm looking up a person's name or an exact date, I want to use a less than match. Extra bracket on the outside before I hit enter, and it's telling us real decrement. And we've got column M to compare to when we pull this down so that we can see if it's working or not. So let's see what happens if I drag it down. And it's aligned exactly. So both of them are finding the same outcome 
we've got some uh, value errors there. So just like we did on the previous example, in edit mode, I'm going to copy out that little prefix that I put at the beginning of the last formula. And all I need is one extra close brackets on the outside now, and I can double click and send that down, and all my errors are gone. Let me just check, change that sport back, and there we are, we've got everything updating as it should. I don't like those value errors, so I'm just gonna put if error around the outside. And things look a lot better. So what we have from this is the ability to identify whether or not something passes a threshold. So I've used that in the case of smallest worthwhile change as, as an example, but I've also seen this kind of method used uh, quite well with regard to banding athletes. So identifying if the score an athlete achieves puts them in a particular band or grouping of athletes. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, relating to something like smallest worthwhile change, but I do like the concept where you have a lookup table, you have all your statistically determined numbers relating to what the smallest worthwhile change on a particular test is, and therefore everything can just reference off that. So ideally, if we chose test two in this group here, then we'd get a new smallest worthwhile change threshold appear and these numbers would all be leveraging off that and the results would still be correct in terms of identifying where they fit. This file is also available if you want. Uh, please email me um, and don't forget if you are interested in learning some more advanced concepts with regard to uh, Excel and monitoring or training your athletes, then click on the link in the description below to check out my Vimeo series there. Thanks guys.